Joanna. Yes. We're alongside is what freeway? Is this the 101? Yes. Yes. And you're living here? Yes. And you've lived here for two years? Yes. Outside by the 101 freeway. Tell me about it. Um, it's, uh, I don't know. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless on that one. Yeah. How do you survive out here? By living it day by day. So um, you're telling me you're recycling. Uh, well, we started a nonprofit, being homeless. Um, it's called Recycling Junkings. Um, we just recycle anything from wood to gold. Uh, anything that we find in the trash, we basically we just uh, recycle it or refurbish it, and then we reuse it, and it's, you know, it's not in the trash anymore. So much. now when you say nonprofit, are you going to file for a 501c3 or it's... We actually did already. Did you really? Yes. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, we actually did start a nonprofit, actual be being homeless. I wow. actually did that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So did you get your 501c3 yet or is it in the process? No, we're actually tax exempt. Really? Yeah, we have an EIN number and you know everything. Awesome. Yeah. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is really great. Oh, wow. So we should tell people, you reached out to me, you emailed me. Yes. And you asked for me to come down because Caltrans, which is what governs the freeways. Yeah, state property. Yeah, is state threatening much. you or they're go. messing us over. How's they're just, they're tearing everything apart like we were actually over there on the other side and um we had a built you know same thing we built our own stuff and so we were where we were at is a tr little triangle that's part of the building that's next door which is private property right now to my knowledge caltrans only is has this jurisdiction for state property right right now why is it that they came one day and they tore everything down everything our spot everything we had our belongings everything now why did they do that how could they do that if it's private property well they basically told us that too bad for us like what are we gonna do about it anyway like pretty much now mind you we do have a nonprofit as well under our names yet we got no no say so about anything we just had to like let it happen for some reason um, now we came to this side over here and like they still tore everything down once again and took everything and they didn't give us no actual note or nothing they didn't leave us with anything or any kind of information to go on ahead and grab our stuff back or anything like we had no chance of recovering anything which from what I know it's not supposed to happen right I mean, so Caltrans came in swept took everything now you guys moved over here and they're threatening to do it again. Yeah, pretty much. And in the meantime, Urban Alchemy, which is, does outreach services, have come and made promises to you and never followed up. Yeah, pretty much. Like they have came over here, took down everybody's names, their information and everything. They said that they were gonna come back and do a follow up. They never did. And if they did, they came back like a few days later just to hand out a water bottle and that was it, they left. Like, they didn't, sell, they didn't tell us anything about anything else. And, like, they basically told my boyfriend as well that, you know, the reason why you guys are not getting any help is because you guys are doing too good. Like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Like, we're doing too good, so that's why we're not getting any kind of help? Like, that's how we gotta deal with all this stuff that's happening to us? For what reason? Like, I mean, there's no, there's no justification for anything that's being done, really, so. So now you ended up homeless. Yeah. You had some family issues. Yeah. And then you went and lived with uh, a couple. Yes. And um, the woman left, and then the guy tried to put you out on the streets. Yeah, like walk the streets. Like. Yeah. And I said no. I had my son with me as well, and so I said no. 
and he wanted to force me to do so and yeah. I said no so I mean I had to leave like and and that is rough for a vulnerable young girl I mean you don't have many choices so yeah you, your, your son is with your mom now yes and you're living out here yes and what would you want people the the people that are driving by there's probably a hundred cars a minute driving by up there what would you want them to know about the people in the tents they see as they're driving by as far as us down yeah. here well yeah just homeless people um we're not all the same um we're not all the same like everybody thinks that we're disrespectful we're rude or we're messy or we try not to be as long as far as we go you know we, we don't try to be like that we try to help out you know um they should take the chance to an opportunity to give other people to um tell their stories you know like not everybody's the same everybody goes through their own stuff um just takes like a minute or so just to get to know that person and then you'll find out a few things that you never knew about that could actually happen there's real people in the tents good people Pretty like much. you just trying to survive Pretty so much. you go into housing but you're not going to go into any program no and i don't blame you no That's, shelters none of that because no. the no. shelters are they're messed up anyway yeah like they think it's bad out here shelter is even worse like yeah. we're all enclosed like you know so i mean i don't know and you've got a community here. There's a gentleman that walked by that was you know, a former Marine, stopped and talked for a while. He seemed very nice. Yes. You got your dogs? Yep, I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're, you're very nice and respectful. You emailed me and asked me to come here because of Caltrans doing the sweep. Yeah, it's just not, it's not fair. It's unfair, like my, boyfriend like he really tries his hardest to keep everybody at a good state of mind with us and so for someone to just feel like they can just do whatever they want to because they can and like we got no say so it's kind of like not not it's not cool like it's not well cool. there's no place for you to go pretty you know? much and, and you know they they say they're sending out engagement teams i think they call them which is the urban alchemy folks but they're not offering you a place no. and then they come and move you right or sweet it's much. not if they were giving you support to help you get out of homelessness okay great but you've been here you told me five years total two years here that's a long time yeah i've been out here since i was 20 21. wow yeah. that's a long time yeah. What's your future like? Well, hopefully keeping the business going. Yeah. Yeah, just making something out of it. That was the business was created because of him. That's what he yeah. he's always um, talked about. So I tried to make it come real. So I mean, I made it happen. So. So now, uh, being a nonprofit, you got a PO box or something. Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. So Not how'd you the, do your, yeah, so is there a way that people can make donations to you? Um, sure. Sure, I mean. Well, how, how do you, how do they go about doing that? Uh, they can drop on by over here. <laughs> I won't give out your address. It, I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, you can email me. If you email me, I'll put the information below. Okay. Uh, in the description. Even if... You know, it takes me a little while to, to email, it, right? So, but uh, you had your 501c3 mailed someplace, and if you're, can you no, know, well, yeah, I did. I mean, I have a mailing. We have a mailing address. We just don't have a PO box. Yeah, you know, okay. Same I thing, though. I right, guess. right. So I'm just, um, I don't know if you have a PayPal or a GoFundMe or something, but I know people watching this will want to help you. And that you have, yeah, I probably should have asked. Do you have a man? What's the address of your nonprofit? And again, I don't know if it's your mom's or what. I just figured you were renting something. Because uh, that's what I did when I, you know, was on the streets. I rented a P.O. box. So I apologize for assuming that. But um, email me, because you know the email, how people can donate. Yeah. 
and I, I'd be happy to add uh, to the description so uh, people can uh, help you out. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? One love. That's all I gotta say. One love. Yeah. You know, just if you had three wishes, what would they be? To be happy, world peace. Just world peace, pretty much. Because if with world peace, everybody's gonna be happy. Everybody's gonna be peaceful. Everybody's gonna get along. There's nothing. More, there's nothing else you can ask for. Like, who want? Who wouldn't want anybody to be happy? I want everybody in this world to be happy. You know. So that's all I. That's all I can be say. Be happy. Be happy. That's it. Well, you are happy. That's the one thing when <laughs> I showed up and I yelled your name and you popped out of your tent. I was like, oh my gosh. She's all positive and happy. <laughs> I try to be. Yeah, I try to great. be. You stay safe out here. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.